Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Photoshop for Video. Today, we're going to talk about a feature that a lot of people don't use, and that is the ability to send a video preview directly out of Photoshop. Now, to do this, you need a couple of pieces of hardware. You're going to need some sort of video monitor. Here, we have an old field monitor from the studio. Now, you can use whatever type of monitor you want. Currently, though, the video preview functionality built into Photoshop only works with standard definition signals. You're also going to need a device such as something like this. This is from Canopus, and this is the ADVC 110. There's lots of these out there. This is just a digital video converter. Now, some people will use an old deck, a broken camera, doesn't matter. What you're looking for is some sort of device that offers the ability for a FireWire port as well as video outputs. This particular device can be used to go both directions, both in and out of the computer. In this case, we're only using it for the output capabilities. Now, what you do is this. You'll go ahead and hook it up to your computer via FireWire cable. And this particular device just uses FireWire. The built-in Photoshop plugin will only work with DV connections, and it's particularly a FireWire standard connection for a regular digital video signal. So a DVC Pro HD or a DVC Pro 50 type deck will not work for this. Once you have that connected, you're going to need to go ahead and connect a video cable and just set it up to the out points. There we go. Now that I'm connected and it's powered on, make sure the monitor's powered on, you just have to do a few things inside of Photoshop. Now, we'll start with a regular 4x3 signal, and I'll choose File, Export, Video Preview with the ellipse. Now, there are two options in there, Video Preview followed by an ellipse, and send video preview to device. You choose video preview when you set it up for the first time. After that, you could repeat with subsequent previews. So let's go ahead and say video preview and make sure my settings are right. NTSC, 4x3, center it, don't scale, do pixel aspect ratio preview. And I click OK. So the video preview has been sent out to the device. Now, this particular monitor is flickering a little bit because, as many of you know who are video pros, it's pretty hard to shoot a standard monitor with a television camera and not get that roll. So not a big deal. It's sending a decent signal, and I could use this to make decisions about my color correction. Let's make a quick adjustment to the image. I'm going to go ahead and apply a levels adjustment here. Open up the middles, pull the blacks down just a little bit. And let's actually do a hue adjustment as well. There we go. Now, the image did not update on the screen. What we could simply do is say, File, Export, Send Video Preview to Device. And what that does is it forces the monitor to update and show you the new results. So very simple. You use the export video preview when you want to set up your device. Then for subsequent previews, you just say send video preview to device. If you want to speed that up, you can easily map it to your keyboard. What you would do is say edit keyboard shortcuts. And just simply look in here, file, scroll on down, export, Send Video Preview to Device. I can click in here and find a keyboard shortcut. Now, most keys are going to be taken. See, I tried Shift-Command-V, and it was already in use. But if I don't care about the Edit Paste Into command, which I don't, I could steal that command and make it available for Video Preview. So I'll just go ahead and click OK. Now, whenever I make a change, I'll just do Shift-Command-V, and the monitor will update with the new picture. So. That works out very, very well. Let's switch on over to a 16 by 9 comp for a moment and take a look here. Now, if you got your 16 by 9 document and you're working with it, you could choose File, Export, Video Preview. And what you want to specify is the aspect ratio of the monitor you've hooked up. So while I'm working with a 16 by 9 file, I would still leave this set to 4 by 3. What you're defining here is the device itself. Photoshop is going to be smart enough when it interprets a widescreen document being sent to a 4x3 device. So we'll say, you know what, don't scale that, or do scale that to fit within the frame. And we'll click OK, and you'll see that it has letterboxed the image on the frame. 
Now, if you were working with a monitor that had a 16 by 9 button, all you would do differently is make sure you set the device to be a 16 by 9 device and then push the 16 by 9 button on your monitor. Pretty straightforward stuff. These commands are very useful because they allow you to see your documents on a video monitor before you send them off to the edit suite. If you happen to be working on the same system within the editing room, that works great. But if you're a graphic designer and you need to prep graphics to give to someone to use in a video, this will let you spot color problems as well as things like interlace flicker before you send the graphics out of house. The other good news here is that if you need it, there are other third party options out there. So, if you don't need something much beefier than FireWire output, be sure to take a look at EchoFire from Synthetic Aperture, which does work with several popular third party graphics cards, such as those in Avid and Final Cut Pro systems. Hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Photoshop for Video. Be sure to check out more. We'll have a new show each week. And I invite you to head on over to creativecow.net where you can check out the Photoshop forums, ask questions, as well as make suggestions for things you'd like to see on upcoming shows. Thanks again.